Welcome to Nightmare Nexus, where history meets mystery. Today we explore 10 real-world locations famed for their haunting tales and spooky sightings. Join us as we uncover the chilling stories and intriguing histories behind some of the most haunted sites around the globe. The Tower of London, England. This historic fortress is not only a former royal palace, but also one of the most haunted locations in the country. Its bloody, tumultuous history has left a mark on the tower and gave rise to centuries of ghost stories and paranormal sightings. Among the most famous ghosts is Anne Boleyn. Anne, second wife of Henry VIII, was executed on the Tower Green in 1536. She's often reported to be seen wandering the grounds, sometimes near the site of her execution, or in the Chapel Royal of St. Peter at Vincula, where she's buried. The most chilling sighting is her carrying her severed head under her arm, a spectral image that has captured the public's imagination for centuries. Another well-known ghost is Henry VI. This monarch was murdered in the Wakefield Tower in 1471 during the Wars of the Roses. His spirit appears as the clock strikes midnight to solemnly pace the tower where he met his untimely end. The ghost of Lady Jane Grey, the Nine Days Queen, is also reported to haunt the tower. Executed at the age of 16 in 1554, her pale and sorrowful apparition wanders the battlements. She remains a tragic figure of innocence caught in the deadly political machinations of her time. Edward Feuve and his younger brother Richard, Duke of York, also called the Tower Princes, are two of the tower's most poignant resident ghosts. After their mysterious disappearance in 1483, their spirits began to haunt the bloody tower where they were held before their disappearance. Visitors and staff have reported the sounds of children's laughter and footsteps, adding to the mystery surrounding their fate. Margaret Pohl, Countess of Salisbury, also haunts the tower. She was executed in a particularly gruesome manner in 1541. The usual executioner at the tower was absent at the time, sent north to battle the rebellion. An inexperienced and clumsy youth was next in line. It took 11 strokes to decapitate Lady Pole. The first completely missed her neck and landed on her shoulder. She had no idea what charges were against her until the time of her execution, and she emphatically denied her guilt until the end. Now, her spirit reenacts her desperate attempt to flee from her executioner. A ghostly bear is one of the most unusual apparitions. It was reported near the Martin Tower in the 1800s, According to legend, the phantom bear caused such terror that the guard who saw it died of a heart attack just after. This spectral bear is believed to be connected to the tower's history as a menagerie, which housed exotic animals brought to England as royal gifts. Other paranormal incidents reported include phantom procession of ghostly figures dressed in ancient armor crossing the tower grounds. The eerie sound of drumbeats is sometimes heard, believed to be the spectral presence of a drummer boy who was beheaded during the English Civil War. The Tower of London's rich history and its role in the lives and deaths of so many significant figures have created an enduring legacy of ghost stories and paranormal activity. Visitors and staff alike continue to share tales of unexplained phenomena, making the tower not only a significant historical site, but also a focal point for those interested in the supernatural. Number two, Eastern State Penitentiary, located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This facility is renowned not only for its historical significance, but also um, for its reputation as one of the most haunted places in America. The prison opened in 1829. It was designed to reform inmates through solitary confinement. Unfortunately, this practice often led to madness rather than rehabilitation. The harsh conditions and isolation left a lasting imprint, contributing to the prison's eerie and haunted atmosphere. Visitors and staff have reported numerous paranormal activities, making Eastern State Penitentiary a focal point for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts. The most commonly reported experiences are eerie sounds such as disembodied whispers, distant screams, and footsteps echoing through the empty cell blocks. These auditory phenomena are particularly unsettling given the prison's history of isolation and suffering. 
Shadow figures are frequently sighted in various parts of the penitentiary. One of the most notorious areas for such episodes is cell block 12. This section is known for its dark and foreboding atmosphere. Shadowy apparitions are often seen darting across the hallways or lurking in the cells, creating a sense of unease among visitors. Cell block four is another hot spot for paranormal activity. Witnesses have reported seeing ghostly faces appearing on the walls, peering out from the cells, and even following them as they move through the block. These faces are said to have haunting, almost pleading expressions. The guard tower is also a site of significant paranormal reports. Many visitors experience the overwhelming sensation of being watched from above, even when the tower is empty. This feeling is often accompanied by cold spots and sudden drops in temperature. One of the most famous ghosts in Eastern State Penn is that of Joseph Slick Joe Taylor. This former inmate attempted to escape but was recaptured and punished severely. His spirit wanders the halls, sometimes appearing as a shadowy or manifesting as a pervasive feeling of dread. Al Capone, infamous gangster, was one of the prison's most well-known inmates. During his time in solitary confinement, he reportedly experienced haunting visions and was tormented by the ghost of James Clark. Clark was one of the victims of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Capone's cell, which was relatively luxurious compared to others, is another area where visitors report strange occurrences, such as the sound of disembodied voices and the feeling of an unseen presence. The penitentiary's death row, where the most hardened criminals were kept, is another area rife with paranormal activity. Visitors often describe an overwhelming sense of despair and fear, as well as hearing unexplained noises and feeling sudden chills. The stories of paranormal activity at Eastern State Penitentiary have been investigated by numerous paranormal researchers and featured on various ghost hunting TV shows the combination of its dark history, the suffering of its inmates, and the multitude of reported ghostly encounters make Eastern State Penitentiary a compelling and chilling destination for those interested in the supernatural. Number three, Edinburgh Castle, atop Castle Rock in Edinburgh, Scotland. This fortress has been a key military stronghold for over 900 years and is steeped in history and legend. Its dramatic, imposing presence has witnessed countless battles, sieges, and acts of violence, all contributing to its reputation as one of the most haunted locations in Scotland. Visitors and staff have reported numerous paranormal activities, each adding to the castle's eerie allure. One of the most famous ghostly figures associated with Edinburgh Castle is the Headless Drummer Boy. Legend states his ghost was first seen in 1650, just before Oliver Cromwell's army attacked the castle. The boy's headless apparition is heard playing his drum in times of imminent danger, a warning of potential threats. Despite centuries of sightings, no one knows the true identity of this spectral drummer adding to the mystery surrounding him. The ghostly presence of prisoners of war also plays a significant part in the castle's haunted history. During the Wars of Independence, French, English, and American prisoners were held in the castle's dungeons. These dungeons, dark and claustrophobic, are said to be haunted by the spirits of those who suffered and died there. Visitors often report moans cries and the clanking of chains echoing through the corridors, as well as sudden drops in temperature and an overwhelming sense of despair. Another tragic figure said to haunt the castle is Lady Janet Douglas, better known as Lady Glamis. She was accused of witchcraft and imprisoned in the castle. She was burned at the stake in 1537. Her ghost, known as the Grey Lady, is seen wandering the corridors and rooms of the castle. Her presence is often accompanied by a strong smell of burning. The castle's dog cemetery is a small garden where the pets of the castle's officers and soldiers are buried. It's also another area of reported paranormal activity. 
A phantom dog is often seen or heard here. Its spectral form still wanders among the graves. The ghostly dog often evokes a sense of melancholy in those nearby as it loyally roams the grounds where its masters once walked. The haunted experiences are not limited to visual sightings either. Many visitors and staff have reported feeling unseen presences brush past them. They're reported hearing unexplained footsteps and experiencing sudden chills. The castle's ancient rooms, narrow passageways, and hidden chambers contribute to a feeling of being watched, heightening the sense of unease. The vaults remain one of the most chilling areas in the castle. This is where the spirits of those who were imprisoned and tortured are said to linger. The vaults, with their dark, oppressive atmosphere, are hotspots for paranormal activity. Reports of apparitions, strange lights, and disembodied voices are common. And many visitors have described feeling a sudden, inexplicable fear when entering these subterranean chambers. Edinburgh Castle's haunted reputation has made it a focal point for paranormal investigations. Ghost hunters and enthusiasts from around the world visit the castle in hopes of encountering its spectral inhabitants. The combination of its rich history, the many lives lost within its walls, and the numerous reported ghostly encounters make Edinburgh Castle a captivating and chilling destination for those intrigued by the supernatural. Number four, the Shanghai Tunnels, Portland, Oregon. These corridors are also known as the Portland Underground. This network of passages are located beneath the streets of Portland. These tunnels were originally built to distribute goods from the Willamette River docks to businesses downtown. It was a solution to avoid the heavy traffic above ground. Sadly, these corridors are more infamously known for their dark history of human trafficking and other illicit activities, which contributed to their reputation as one of the most haunted places in the United States. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the tunnels were used to kidnap individuals, often young men who were then sold to ships as forced labor. The practice came to be known as shanghaiing. Victims were drugged or knocked unconscious in local saloons and then spirited through the tunnels to the waterfront. There they would be sold to ship captains in need of crew members. This illicit activity left a dark and eerie legacy, with many reports of paranormal occurrences linked to the suffering experienced by those who were captured. Visitors to the Shanghai tunnels often report a variety of unsettling experiences. Disembodied voices and whispers frequently echo through the passageways sometimes accompanied by the sounds of footsteps and the clank of chains. These auditory phenomena are believed to be the lingering spirits of the kidnapped victims, who still cry out for help and try to escape their grim fate. Shadowy figures are another common sight in the tunnels. Many visitors have reported dark, human-like shapes moving quickly out of the corner of their eyes, only to vanish when looked at directly. These shadows are thought to be the ghosts of the captives, doomed to eternally wander the tunnels in a search of freedom. One particularly chilling area is the holding cells. This is where captured individuals were kept before being shipped off. The cells are small, claustrophobic spaces that exude an oppressive and heavy atmosphere. Visitors often describe feeling an overwhelming sense of dread and sadness when they enter the cells, as well as sudden drops in temperature and a feeling of being watched. In addition to the captives, the tunnels are also haunted by the ghosts of the criminals who operated the Shanghaiing rings. These men, who profited from the misery of others, are believed to linger in the dark corners of the tunnels. Some visitors have reported feeling menacing presences and encountering apparitions that seem to exude malice and hostility. One of the most well-known ghostly figures associated with the Shanghai tunnels is a young woman named Nina. She was reportedly kidnapped and held in the tunnels. According to legend, she tried to escape, but was caught and subsequently murdered. Her spirit haunts the tunnels, and visitors have reported hearing her crying and feeling a cold, ghostly touch when near the area where she was believed to have died. The tunnels' haunted reputation has drawn the attention of paranormal investigators and enthusiasts, who frequently visit in hopes of experiencing its ghostly phenomena. The combination of its dark history, 
the many lives impacted by the nefarious activities that took place there, and the numerous reports of paranormal activity make the Shanghai Tunnels a compelling and eerie destination for those interested in the supernatural. Number five, the Myrtles Plantation Saint, Francisville, Louisiana. This antebellum home often cited as one of America's most haunted houses. The plantation was built in 1796 by General David Bradford and developed a long and storied history filled with tragedy, violence, and death, which all contribute to its paranormal reputation. Visitors and staff have reported numerous ghostly encounters that make it a focal point for supernatural enthusiasts. One of the most famous ghosts associated with Myrtles is Chloe, reportedly a slave who was hung for poisoning the wife and children of her master, Clark Woodruff. According to legend, Chloe was caught eavesdropping on the family's conversations. In the early 2000s, the legend was that her ear had been cut off as punishment. According to modern legend, to avoid severe punishment, she poisoned a birthday cake. In this story, she only intended to make the family ill, but inadvertently caused the deaths of Woodruff's wife, Sarah, and two of their children. Chloe was hanged by fellow slaves and thrown into the Mississippi River. Her spirit is said to linger at the plantation. She is often seen wearing a green turban as she wanders the grounds in the house. Visitors and staff frequently report appearances of her apparition particularly around the areas where the poisoning allegedly occurred. Some have captured her ghostly image in photographs, often appearing as a shadowy figure or a translucent shape. Chloe is also associated with unexplained occurrences, such as the smell of burning candles and the sound of children crying. The plantation is said to be haunted by other spirits as well. One of the most common is the shade of a young girl, believed to have been one of the Woodruff children who died from the poisoning. This ghostly child is often seen playing on the verandas and in the rooms of the house, sometimes accompanied by the sound of giggling or the sensation of a child's touch. Another notable ghost is that of William Drew Winter, an attorney who lived at the Myrtles Plantation in the 1800s. Winter was shot on the front porch and staggered into the house, dying on the 17th step of the staircase. His footsteps are still heard echoing through the house, and many visitors report feeling a cold chill when standing on the staircase. The plantation is also home to the spirits of former slaves who suffered and died on the grounds. Visitors and paranormal investigators have reported hearing disembodied voices, seeing apparitions in period clothing, and experiencing sudden drops in temperature. These spirits are often seen in the plantation's slave quarters and other outbuildings, as well as in the main house. Other ghostly encounters include sightings of a man in old-fashioned clothing, believed to be General David Bradford, the original owner of the plantation. His apparition is often seen in the mirror in the foyer, and some guests have reported seeing his reflection standing behind them. The Myrtles Plantation's rich history of tragedy and death, combined with the numerous reports of ghostly activity, has made it a popular destination for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts. The plantation offers tours that highlight its haunted history, allowing visitors to explore the eerie and atmospheric grounds while learning about the many spirits said to reside there. The combination of its storied past, tragic events, and continuous reports of paranormal activity make the Myrtles Plantation a compelling and chilling destination for those intrigued by the supernatural. Number six, Gettysburg Battlefield, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This is one of the most haunted locations in the United States, a site where the echoes of the past linger palpably. This is the site of one of the most pivotal and bloodiest battles of the American Civil War, the Battle of Gettysburg in July, 1863. The area witnessed immense trauma, suffering, and death. The historical and emotional intensity has contributed to numerous reports of paranormal activity making Gettysburg a focal point for ghost hunters and historians alike. Visitors to the Gettysburg battlefield often report sightings of phantom soldiers. These apparitions are usually in full uniform. They march in formation or stand at attention as if still engaged in the battle. Witnesses have described seeing spectral figures on horseback, cannons being fired by unseen hands, and entire regiments of ghostly troops moving across the fields. 
These manifestations are often accompanied by the sounds of drums, bugles, and the distant rumble of cannon fire, creating an eerie and immersive experience. One of the most haunted areas of the battlefield is Devil's Den, a rocky outcrop that was the scene of intense fighting. Visitors frequently report seeing the apparitions of soldiers in this area, often appearing as solid figures that vanish upon closer inspection. There are also numerous accounts of cameras malfunctioning, batteries draining inexplicably, and orbs of light appearing in photographs taken at Devil's Den. The wheat field and the peach orchard, two other key locations of the battle, are also known for their paranormal activity. These sites saw heavy casualties, and many visitors report hearing the sounds of battle, rifle shots, cannon blasts, and the cries of wounded soldiers echo through the fields. Some have felt unseen hands touch them or pull at their clothing as if trying to get their attention. The area known as Little Round Top was a strategic hill that was fiercely contested during the battle. It's another hot spot for ghostly encounters. The spirit of Colonel Strong Vincent, who was mortally wounded defending the hill, is said to still watch over the site. Visitors have reported seeing a ghostly figure in Union uniform, believed to be Vincent, surveying the battlefield with a look of determination. Another notable location is the Triangle Field, where intense hand-to-hand -hand combat took place. This field is notorious for heavy paranormal activity, with many reports of ghostly soldiers appearing and disappearing, strange mists forming, and the sensation of being watched. Some visitors have even claimed to hear the spectral cries and groans of dying soldiers. The town of Gettysburg itself is not immune to the paranormal phenomena associated with the battle. Many buildings that were makeshift hospitals during and after the battle are said to be haunted by the spirits of soldiers who died there. The Gettysburg Hotel is one such location. This historic building is reported to be haunted by the ghost of a Union soldier who roams the halls. The Jenny Wade House, where the only alleged civilian casualty of the battle was killed, is also a site of frequent ghost sightings and unexplained occurrences. One of the most famous Gettysburg ghostly figures is that of General Robert E. Lee. His apparition has been seen in several locations around the battlefield, often on horseback, surveying the terrain as he did during the battle. Gettysburg Battlefield's haunted reputation draws thousands of visitors each year, including historians, paranormal investigators, and curious tourists. The combination of historical significance, the sheer scale of human suffering, and the many reported ghostly encounters make Gettysburg a compelling and chilling destination for those interested in the supernatural. Number 7. Port Arthur, located on the Tasman Peninsula in Tasmania. This former penal colony dates to the early 19th century. It's widely regarded as one of Australia's most haunted sites. Established in 1830, the colony was used to house the hardest of British convicts who were subjected to brutal discipline and harsh labor. The site's dark history of suffering, punishment, and death has left an indelible mark that results in numerous reports of paranormal activity. The Port Arthur Historic Site encompasses a range of buildings, including the penitentiary, the separate prison, the commandant's house, and the asylum each with its own tales of ghostly encounters. Visitors and staff alike have reported experiencing unexplained phenomena throughout the site. The penitentiary, which served as the main housing for convicts, is a hot spot for ghostly activity. Many visitors report seeing shadowy figures moving through the ruins, often described as men in old-fashioned convict clothing. These apparitions are frequently accompanied by the sounds of disembodied footsteps. These phantom sounds echo through the crumbling structure. Some have even heard faint sounds of chains rattling and the distant cries of inmates. The separate prison, designed for solitary confinement and sensory deprivation, is notorious for its haunting atmosphere. The harsh conditions drove many inmates to madness, and their restless spirits are said to linger. Visitors often report a heavy, oppressive feeling upon entering the building, as well as hearing whispers and murmurs that seem to come from nowhere. Some have encountered the ghostly figure of a man wandering the corridors, believed to be one of the inmates who succumbed to the mental torment of isolation. The Commandant's house, where the officers in charge of the penal colony lived, is also said to be haunted. The ghost of a former Commandant is often seen looking out of the windows as if keeping watch over the site. 
Visitors have reported feeling sudden cold spots and an overwhelming sense of unease when exploring the house. Some have even claimed to see the ghostly apparition of a woman in Victorian clothing, thought to be the wife of a commandant who died tragically. The asylum was home for inmates deemed insane. It's also another focal point for paranormal activity. The screams and moans of the mentally ill inmates are said to still echo through the building. Many visitors experience feelings of sadness and dread upon entering the asylum, and some have reported seeing shadowy figures darting through the halls or peering out from the cells. The Isle of the Dead is a small island in the harbor where over 1,000 convicts, soldiers, and free settlers were buried. It also adds to the site's haunted reputation. Visitors who take the ferry to the island often report a sense of being watched and experiencing sudden drops in temperature. Some have seen ghostly figures among the graves, particularly at dusk when the light begins to fade. The Port Arthur Historic Site offers ghost tours that delve into these tales of paranormal activity. This allows visitors to explore the eerie ruins by lantern light. These tours often lead to encounters with unexplained phenomena, such as flickering lights, doors opening and closing by themselves, and the sensation of being touched by unseen hands. The combination of its brutal history, the suffering endured by its inmates, and the multitude of reported ghostly encounters make Port Arthur a compelling destination for those interested in the supernatural. Number eight, Waverly Hills Sanatorium, Louisville, Kentucky. This former hospital is renowned as bring one of the most haunted places in the United States. Originally opening in 1910 as a tuberculosis hospital, it saw thousands of patients succumb to the disease. The sheer number of deaths and the suffering experienced within its walls have left a profound and eerie legacy, resulting in numerous reports of paranormal activity. The sanatorium's most infamous ghostly figure is the Creeper, a dark, shadowy entity that is often described as crawling along the floors, walls, and ceilings. Unlike typical ghost sightings, the Creeper is associated with a sense of malevolence and dread. Witnesses report feeling an overwhelming sense of fear and oppression when encountering this figure which often moves in unnatural, spider-like motions. Its presence is typically accompanied by a sudden drop in temperature and an eerie silence that amplifies the terror it invokes. Another famous spirit is that of a nurse who committed suicide in room 502. According to legend, this nurse became pregnant out of wedlock and rather than face the stigma and loss, took her own life by hanging herself from the room's light fixture. Visitors and paranormal investigators frequently report her apparition in the window or feeling a strong presence in room 502. Some have heard her sobbing or felt an inexplicable sadness when near the room. The fourth floor is notorious for its high level of paranormal activity. Shadowy figures are often seen darting across the hallways and disembodied voices are a common occurrence. One of the most famous apparitions is that of a young boy named Timmy who haunts this floor. Timmy is often seen playing with a ball and visitors often bring toys to try to interact with his spirit. The sound of a ball bouncing and a child's laughter can sometimes be heard echoing through the halls. The body chute, also known as the death tunnel, is another area with a dark history and a high level of reported paranormal activity. This long sloping tunnel was used to transport the bodies of deceased patients out of the hospital to avoid demoralizing the other patients. Visitors often report the sounds of footsteps, voices, and even screams emanating from the tunnel. The oppressive atmosphere and the sense of despair that pervades the tunnel make it one of the most chilling parts of the sanatorium. Throughout Waverly Hills, visitors and investigators have captured numerous electronic voice phenomena, or EVP, recordings. These EVPs often include voices responding to questions, unexplained whispers, and even cries for help. The sanatorium's vast network of rooms and corridors seems to amplify these sounds, creating an environment where the past feels ever-present. In addition to specific apparitions and phenomena, there is a general sense of unease and tension that permeates Waverly Hills. Cold spots, sudden drafts, and the feeling of being watched are commonly reported by those who explore the sanatorium. Some visitors have experienced physical sensations such as being touched, pushed, or even scratched by unseen forces. 
Waverly Hills Sanatorium's reputation has made it a popular destination for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts. The combination of its tragic history, the sheer number of reported ghostly encounters, and the eerie atmosphere of the abandoned hospital make it a compelling and chilling destination for those intrigued by the supernatural. Tours and overnight investigations offer a chance to experience the haunted halls firsthand, drawing visitors from around the world who hope to glimpse the spirits that still linger in this historic and haunted location. Number nine, the Aokigahara Forest, also known as the Suicide Forest, is located at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. It has gained a notorious reputation due to the high number of suicides that occur within its dense and dark confines. This tragic association has led to numerous reports of paranormal activity, making it one of the most haunted places in Japan. The forest's dense foliage and twisted trees create a labyrinthine environment that can cause disorientation for even the most experienced hikers. The natural silence within the forest is unsettling. The thick canopy of trees muffles sound and creates an eerie and oppressive atmosphere. This profound silence is often broken only by the sounds of footsteps, whispered voices, or unexplained noises, adding to the forest's eerie reputation. One of the most commonly reported paranormal phenomena is the sensation of being watched or followed. Many hikers have described feeling an unseen presence trail them through the forest, even when they're certain they are alone. This feeling of being observed is often accompanied by a sudden inexplicable coldness, as if a ghostly figure has passed by. Numerous reports speak of ghostly apparitions appearing among the trees. These apparitions are described as shadowy figures or as ethereal, mist-like shapes that vanish upon approach. Some visitors claim to see the spirits of those who took their lives in the forest. They may appear in traditional Japanese clothing or modern attire. Their face is often marked by expressions of deep sadness or despair. Another unsettling phenomenon is the sound of footsteps and rustling leaves, even when no one else is visible. Some hikers have reported hearing whispers, sobbing, and even screams echoing through the forest. These auditory hallucinations are believed to be the cries of the tormented souls who died in Aokigahara and are unable to find peace in the afterlife. Personal belongings and remnants of campsites are frequently found scattered throughout the forest. These items, left by those who came to Aokigahara with the intention of ending their lives, contribute to the forest's macabre atmosphere. Many believe these objects are imbued with the residual energy of their owners which further enhances the forest's haunted reputation. The forest is also known for its strange magnetic anomalies, which can cause compasses to malfunction. This disorienting effect, combined with the forest's natural maze-like structure, easily leads to hikers becoming lost. Some attribute these anomalies to the restless spirits that inhabit the forest. They believe that they interfere with navigational equipment to trap the living within their realm. Local legends add to the haunted lore of Aokigahara, one such legend speaks of the Yurei, or vengeful spirits, who are believed to haunt the forest. These spirits, often depicted as pale, ghostly figures with long black hair and white funeral garments, are thought to be the souls of those who died with unresolved grievances or strong emotions. They lure unsuspecting travelers deeper into the forest, usually to their doom, the Aokigahara Forest's tragic history, combined with the numerous reports of paranormal activity, has made it a focal point for ghost hunters and paranormal investigators. Despite the forest's haunting beauty, the oppressive atmosphere and the weight of its tragic associations make it a chilling and somber destination for those who dare to explore its depths. Signs are posted at the forest's entrance urging those contemplating suicide to seek help and highlighting the ongoing efforts to prevent further tragedies in this haunted and sorrowful place. Number 10, Brand Castle, Transylvania, Romania. This towering Gothic structure is often linked with the Dracula legend. Although its connections to Vlad the Impaler, the historical figure who inspired Bram Stoker's Count Dracula, are tenuous, 
The castle's imposing architecture and rich history continue to inspire tales of haunting and the supernatural. The castle, perched high on a cliff, is surrounded by dense forests. The location exudes an eerie atmosphere that sets the stage for ghostly legends. Built in the 14th century as a fortress to defend against invading Ottoman forces, Brand Castle has witnessed centuries of turmoil, bloodshed, and mystery. This turbulent past has contributed to numerous reports of paranormal activity within its ancient walls. One of the most commonly reported phenomena is the apparition of a spectral woman, believed to be Queen Marie of Romania. Queen Marie, who resided in the castle during the early 20th century, is said to roam the halls in a flowing white gown. Visitors and staff have reported her ghostly figure gliding silently through the rooms and corridors, particularly in the Queen's chamber. Her presence is often accompanied by the scent of violets, her favorite flower. Another apparition to frequent Bran is that of a monk, who was said to be bricked up alive within the castle as punishment for some transgression. This ghostly monk is often seen praying or walking the dim corridors, his face obscured by the hood of his robe. The sound of his whispered prayers and the soft rustle of his robes are sometimes heard in the dead of night. The castle's dungeon is another paranormal hotspot. The dungeon was used to imprison and torture enemies. Its dark history of suffering and death has left a mark. Visitors report hearing the clinking of chains, agonized moans, and cries for help emanating from the dungeon's depths. Some have even felt icy hands grip their shoulder or a sudden chill that envelops them while exploring the dungeon. The eerie feeling of being watched is common throughout Bran Castle. Many visitors describe a sense of unease, as if unseen eyes are tracking their every move. Cold spots and sudden drops in temperature are frequently experienced, particularly in the older, less frequented areas. The castle's connection to the Dracula legend also contributes to its haunted lore. While Vlad the Impaler's actual association with Bran Castle is largely speculative, the castle's Gothic architecture and location in Transylvania have made it an ideal setting for tales of vampires. Some visitors have reported seeing shadowy figures with glowing red eyes lurk in the castle's dark corners, while others felt an inexplicable sense of dread as if an unseen force drained their energy. Legends of Striggoy, Romanian vampires, or undead spirits add to the castle's spooky atmosphere. According to local folklore, Striggoy are restless spirits that rise from their graves to haunt the living. They often seek revenge or attempt to resolve unfinished business. Sightings of Striggoy have been reported in and around the castle, often accompanied by the feeling of an unnatural presence and unexplained phenomena, such as flickering lights and sudden gusts of cold wind. Bran Castle's haunted reputation draws numerous paranormal investigators, ghost hunters, and curious tourists eager to experience its supernatural allure. The castle offers guided night tours that delve into its ghostly legends and dark history, allowing visitors to explore its shadowy halls and hidden chambers by candlelight. These tours often leave participants with spine-tingling memories and a deeper appreciation for the castle's rich and mysterious past. The combination of Bran Castle's dramatic Gothic architecture, its historical significance, and the many reported ghostly encounters make it a compelling destination for those intrigued by the supernatural. Whether or not one believes in ghosts, the castle's atmosphere and legends provide a hauntingly fascinating experience. From ancient castles to eerie battlefields, these locations are steeped in history and haunted by tales of the past. Thanks for joining us on this ghostly journey across the world's most haunted sites. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more videos exploring the mysterious corners of history.